This is the best individual Titan build in the game and it isn't even close. So if you're new or unfamiliar to Arc Titan, I promise you no more struggling thinking about which aspects, fragments, exotics, weapons or mods to use. In today's video, I'm going to take you by the hand and show you step by step exactly what you should be using and why. So you'll have a fully kitted out meta Arc Titan from top to bottom ready for PvP in precisely 9 minutes or less. Let's get started. For a long time, Arc Titans ruled the meta with an electrified Iron Fist. There was arguably no subclass that was as oppressive during the introduction of 3.0 subclasses than the Striker. People cried out to the wilderness that Striker was broken, being the most dominant subclass with literally no downsides. It was a Frankenstein class that could do everything the other classes did, but better. But see, here's the reason why Striker was so meta then, and also still so painfully meta now. Arc Titan has the best neutral game of literally every single subclass in the game and not only is it versatile the kit is absolutely lethal you have absurd speed with amplification which you get after every single melee kill shoulder charges and thruster for ankle breaking movement knockout and touch of thunder for pure destructive capabilities and juggernaut for tanking damage while closing the distance if you want to use a subclass that can literally do anything anywhere anytime whether it's hunkering down like a turtle or throwing yourself into the fray dealing death by blood force trauma there is no better choice than Arc Titan, Striker, the Slayer's choice. So let's talk aspects. Arc Titans have three aspects to choose from. Knockout, Juggernaut, and Touch of Thunder. Knockout is mandatory. Not only is it arguably the backbone of the Arc Titan identity, it provides an outrageous amount of utility for a very easy activation trigger. All you have to do is break an opponent's shield, be it with your guns, abilities, or fists, and you'll get the following benefits for seven seconds. Extended melee range, causing you to teleport and stutter in close quarter fights, as well as increased melee damage. These benefits become even scarier when paired up with the correct fragments and certain exotics, which will allow you to amplify the benefits of knockout. Picking knockout as your first aspect is mandatory, but the question then is whether to equip Juggernaut or Touch of Thunder as the second aspect. Juggernaut gives you a 50 HP mobile frontal shield when sprinting for a short duration when you have full class ability energy, whereas Touch of Thunder buffs your grenades, most notably giving you two lightning grenades, which will also jolt your opponents. Now, Juggernaut shields are extremely effective, most notably because their 50 HP overshield doesn't allow for bleed through damage. In other words, you can quite literally tank a golden gun shot that does a billion damage, which will destroy the shield, but without harming you at all. This allows you to play an extremely aggressive and ape-like playstyle, basically running at people with shotguns knowing that they can't kill you without destroying your shield first. But at the highest levels of PvP, most players would agree that buffing your lightning grenades, arguably one of the strongest grenades in the game, and then getting two of them at that is probably the better pick. Hence the most common pairing you'll see, and what I recommend, is knockout with Touch of Thunder. Just quickly guys, settle a very important debate for me. My friend is dating a new girl who said she's been with 30 dudes. So let's talk body counts. How much is too much? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll pick one person to carry to the lighthouse this week and enter them in the draw to win this beautiful emblem. Don't forget also to drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more builds from me. As a small creator, it means the world to me, so thank you. Okay, let's talk exotics. Firstly, you can't ever go wrong with June Marches. Dunes has been the number one meta pick for a long time because of the increased sprint speed, slide distance, and the lightning chains that proc off melee hits. Paired with Knockout, a shotgun and some aggressive play, Junes has the ability to cut through whole teams. Next up we have Peacekeepers. Yes, yes, I know they were nerfed, but trust me, all it did was take it from S plus tier to S tier. Peacekeepers is pretty much the guaranteed pick of sweaty players all over the Crucible and for good reason. SMGs have been meta for almost two years and Peacekeepers basically supercharge you if you have an SMG equipped. You get the same sprint and slide boost as with Junes, except you also get extra mobility, increased strafe speeds, increased handling, swap speeds, ADS speeds on your SMG and auto loading when you stow your SMG. Peacekeepers are quite literally insane. And if you're running hard meta with SMG and Cloud Strike, then Peacekeepers are a mandatory pick. Lastly, I want to mention an exotic that is seeing a lot more play recently as people start to realize that any ability that can one shot someone is probably a bit overpowered. And that exotic is Peregrine Greaves. Peregrine's buffs your shoulder charge melee damage, allowing you to one hit kill guardians in the Crucible. The only downside, just make sure you're in the air for about a second when you activate your melee. That's it. With a little bit of practice, you will literally walk around with an ability that can one shot kill supers. It's wild fun, and I highly recommend trying it. In terms of fragments, here's what I recommend. Spark of Resistance, which gives you about 10% damage resist when around three or more players, very useful for aggressive pushes and close quarter engagements. And before anyone asks, yes, this does work in PvP, even though it says combatants. Spark of Feedback, which 
increases melee damage after being meleeed and in fact also stacks with the damage bonus from knockout. Spark of Recharge, which grants 200% increased melee and grenade recharge when critically wounded. And lastly, if you have the room, Spark of Vaults, which grants a nice plus 10 to recovery, allowing you to hit your stat lines just a little bit easier. Just quickly, if you're enjoying the background footage, make sure to go check out my amazing streamer friend Synchro. Not only is Synchro quite literally one of the best Titan players I've ever personally witnessed, he's highly entertaining and a genuinely hilarious watch. I strongly encourage you to go check out his stream over here. And be sure to let him know that Mr. Armageddon sent you. In terms of abilities, here's what I recommend. For class ability, it's really a choice between Towering Barricade and Thruster. Now, don't get me wrong, Thruster is an excellent mobility tool, and the low cooldown means that it's especially great when paired with the Juggernaut Aspect to maximize the uptime on your Juggernaut Shields. But if we're talking true meta picks for competitive play like Comp or Trials of Osiris, then the Towering Barricade has more utility. Barricades allow you to secure reses, capture zones, establish map control, and lock down lanes. In terms of melee ability, I recommend recommend using the shoulder charge. Not only does it allow you to get to areas faster than just sprinting, cross dangerous lanes at high speed, juke players and break ankles, shoulder charge also blinds your opponent and nearby opponents, making it a very effective entry tool compared to other Titan melee abilities. Of course, when paired with Peregrines, it also turns into a nuclear bomb, so there is that too. In terms of nades, I would opt for lightning nades when paired with Touch of Thunder. They have a high damage output and Touch of Thunder gives you two charges and jolts targets. Otherwise, pulse grenades are also good for zone denial and area control. When it comes to weapons, what you'll find is that SMGs tend to be the meta pick for most good titans, and that's partly because of how strong the Peacekeeper's exotic really is. In fact, a lot of the footage you've been watching has been Synchro using double SMGs, which he's using to constantly push the pace with a hyper-aggressive playstyle. That being said, most of the time you'll be pairing your favorite SMG like an Ending Tempest with a longer range option like the very meta Cloud Strike Sniper, or if you're comfortable fighting inside the pocket, then a meta shotgun like Conditional Finality. My recommendation for this this build is using an SMG with a sniper, or if you prefer playing a bit more passive, then Igneous Hammer with Conditional Finality. In terms of mods, I recommend using Targeting Mods, Dexterity Mods, Unflinching Mods, Holster Mods, and Bomber Mods times 3. Stats wise, you'll want to prioritize Recovery, Resilience, and Discipline in that order, though ideally you would have 100 in each. To make things easier for you, you can also check out the dim link below for the Peacekeepers build, which I'm currently using with Arc Titan. Make sure to replace Peacekeepers with something else if you don't plan on using SMGs. By the way, if you're enjoying my content, did you know that I have a Patreon now? Being a Patreon supporter comes with a host of amazing benefits. If you need crucible coaching or trials help or comp shippers, then allow me to thank you for your support by helping you achieve your crucible goals. Not only that, you'll also receive exclusive access to a private VIP Discord where you have direct access to me and other Patreon members, as well as sneak peeks into future content, and of course, a shout out in every video going forward, kinda like this. As a small content creator, I am pretty much on that beans and toast diet, so if you want to help me continue making videos like today without having to dumpster dive in the alley behind my apartment block, which I have definitely never thought about doing, then I invite you to check out my Patreon in the description below. Also, YouTube seems to think that this video here is the next video most suited to you. Go check it out and let me know if you think YouTube guessed right. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the Crucible.